Welcome to Second Tech, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Environmental Affairs Minister Edna Malewa has given her views on the climate change discussions at the upcoming Conference of the Parties in December. Natalie Grieve tells us more. Hi Natalie. Hi Chanel. What was the Minister's biggest criticism against developed nations? Well as you know we're four weeks away from COP21 which is the 21st Congress of the Parties and this year it's being held in Paris uh, under the United Nations Framework for the Convention of Climate Change. Uh, Malema has come out quite strongly against uh, the stance taken by developed countries. She is arguing that the uh, emissions mitigation commitments that, they are, that they've made in the run-up to the agreement are, is simply not sufficient enough, that it places a far disproportionate burden on the mitigation interventions of developing countries. Uh, so Male Malewa's position follows uh, the recent submissions of uh, intended nationally determined contributions or INDCs by the various UN member states. And these commitments essentially outline the mitigation mechanisms that these countries intend on introducing in order to meet a, a global temperature cap of two degrees and also on how they intend on financing this. Um, so she argues that it just simply isn't enough, that in terms of what the developed countries are offering, um, they are not taking the fair share and, and shouldering enough responsibility, rather diverting the responsibility of mitigation and, and adaptation onto developing countries. Um, in fact, an early synthesis of the INDCs by the UN Secretariat has found that even if all of these pledges were enacted, we'd only see a limit of three degrees in terms of a, a temperature, global temperature increase, which is obviously exceeding the threshold of two degrees. And in terms of the, the African context, that would go up to um, between four and six degrees. So she does have a point in saying that we do need more commitments from developed countries. Um, I'm sure developed countries will come back with a position saying that, well, they also need more of a commitment from the developing states as well, um, and groupings such as the Africa grouping, of which South Africa is a member. So it all comes down to, to what happens around the negotiation table in Paris. She cited four major areas of political divergence that needs to be discussed during the negotiations. What are these? Well, in no discussion is going to take place without some sort of political context, and the UNFCCC negotiations are definitely no exception to this. So it is a bit of a political hotbed. Um, we are going to see politics playing a certain role. It's, it's w quite widely acknowledged. Um, there are four main areas of political divergence, uh, the first of which and probably the most prominent of which is the principle, sorry, the principle of common but differentiated responsibilities and respective capabilities, which essen essentially sees how the, um, the global warming cap target uh, is, is sliced up amongst the various member states. So how each state, be it a developing state or a developing state, is responsible for introducing mechanisms to reduce their emissions and to provide financing. Developed states are essentially arguing that they won't endorse an agreement if the current divide between developed, developing and donor states is maintained. But developing countries are arguing that if all countries are expected to introduce the same sort of mitigation measures, it places an unfair responsibility on developing states, obviously because their financial uh, resources are far less than that of, of a developed state, such as the US. Um, they claim that this unfairly transitions responsibility onto developing countries' shoulders. Um, another point of contention around uh, political divergence is climate change finance. This is a big one. Um, in Cancun, the developed countries committed to funding of $100 billion a year by 2010 to assist developing countries to introduce the various uh, mitigation mechanisms. Now, that has actually yet to be put into effect. And what the developing grouping, such as the Africa grouping, is looking for out of Paris is for a clear roadmap or strategy, how developed countries actually plan on, on providing this finance, at which rate, at which pace is this finance going to be provided, and also beyond 2020, is this finance going to be provided then. Uh, there's also an issue around which developed or which developing countries qualify for this assistance. Developed countries are now saying that certain states, such as South Africa, who don't really qualify as low income or vulnerable states, shouldn't actually qualify for this assistance. So that's another political issue that will need to be addressed quite quickly and quite early on during the negotiations. On a legal front, uh, there are quite a few countries, both developed and developing, that are arguing uh, that they wouldn't ascribe or endorse a Paris Agreement where the INDCs were held to be legally binding. 
Um, however, there is a belief that if there was an agreement around differentiation, uh, the principle of differentiation, then this issue would likely fall away. So finally, the last sort of politically divergent issue at Paris this year is going to be the ambition gap, where we've seen that the INDCs um, have pointed to the fact that it's unlikely that we're going to meet the three degree global warming target. Um, so we need to figure out a way of doing this. Um, Malewa argues that it's not actually now just an issue of a nice to have, but certain um, smaller island states, which are parts of the Africa grouping, actually are now people are being evacuated out of those countries. So it's, it's, it's quite urgent. Um, so these are all four very politically uh, emotive topics that are going to have to be addressed early on for any sort of real agreement to come out of Paris in December. The UNFCCC Africa Grouping agrees that adaptation should be a global responsibility. Can you tell us about that? Just providing an indication of, of what global warming could cost Africa. Uh, if temperatures were to remain below 2 degrees by 5050, we could spend up to 50 billion rand a year. But if we miss our target and global temperatures rise by 3 degrees, then that will cost us 100 billion rand a year, which is obviously a significant bur burden and not one that African states can afford. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.